This is the original Xbox. XBMC ran on this. Before that, the Xbox Media Center, and before that, the Xbox Media Player. It was gigantic. It was heavy. It had a 3.5 inch hard drive. And it's just been pretty effectively completely replaced with this. The NVIDIA Shield Android TV. NVIDIA's first console, which runs Android, of course. But more importantly for us, Kodi. Let's check it out. To start out, we're going to go ahead and unbox this thing. So we take that out of the box, and here is the NVIDIA Shield console. Here are the ports that are available. There's the power port on the right, then the HDMI, Ethernet, two USB, I believe they're 3.0 ports, uh, the micro USB port to access the internal drive, and it looks like a micro SD uh, slot right here, and then more exhaust. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to bother showing you all the, the uh, unboxing because frankly I think those are pretty boring. But here is the console, here is a banana. Here are the other things that come in the box. There's the controller. Uh, okay, so here is another controller. Um, very thin and small. Um, it looks like it has a nifty volume up down slider right here, a uh, back button, the circle uh, that's probably left right up down directional arrows along with the OK button and I'm not really sure what this button does. I looked it up online and I sort of forgot already. I know it's not a context menu button but I'm told that we should be able to hold this button down and it should work as a context menu button uh, for Cody. Um, let's see, other things in here, there's the instruction guide. This is the NVIDIA Shield Android TV's user interface. Um, for the most part, it's actually just the standard Android TV user interface, actually. There are some slight differences, which we'll get to right away, but to start out, to give you a basic idea, you have a place where you can click to search if you have a microphone or you use the controller for uh, your, con uh, your console controller. Uh, then there's a list of things you might like to watch. Uh, this populates the more you use it. Next up is the Shield Hub, which includes streaming games, which is games that NVIDIA Shield provides through their streaming service. Download games, which means you can download various Android Power games, which we'll get to in a second. GeForce PC games, which are games you can stream for your from your NVIDIA graphics card powered PC. Uh, it has to be a fairly modern PC to work, though. Uh, and then Netflix. Um, I've gone ahead and already downloaded a couple NVIDIA specific games, namely Half-Life 2 uh, and Portal, and we'll get maybe a look at those. Finally, there's apps. At the moment, I'm pretty heavily using these two right here, YouTube and Kodi. There's also this File Explorer app, which I used, and we'll get to in a second. Um, well, actually, let's talk about it right now. So at the moment, you can't download Kodi from the Google Play Store. It just doesn't work. So what I've gone ahead and done instead of downloading it is I downloaded a, a nightly build uh, from Kodi. Uh, the Kodi.tv. Um, I've then installed ES File Explorer. Uh, I put the nightly build onto a thumb drive, plugged it into the back of the, the shield, opened the thumb drive from this File Explorer, and then uh, gone ahead and installed Kodi. You do need to enable a couple settings to install Kodi that way. Namely, what you need to do is go to Security and Restrictions, then turn on unknown sources that allows installation of apps from unknown sources. Uh, turn off verify apps. I think that turns itself off. Um, and the rest doesn't really matter. Uh, so after that, you can go ahead and install your APK without any problem. So we installed Kodi, and we'll look at that in here in just a second. 
Um, but I did want to show off a couple other really cool things that you can do with the shield. So my favorite thing personally is that you can launch anything from your PC. My PC is called XBMC Nate. Um, and I've got a bunch of stuff installed from, sh from, uh, uh, actually a combination of GOG.com, um, and Steam. Uh, so for example, the Beast Within, uh, the original Gabriel Knight, um, you know, various things like that from, come from GOG, Steam, I have, a, another bunch of games. And if you'll notice, I also have Cody for Windows installed, um, what I've done there, the, the the really nifty thing you can do with uh, streaming uh, PC games over the NVIDIA Shield uh, is that you can stream any application. You just tell tell the, the NVIDIA GeForce experience which applications you want to stream, and you can add them to the list. So I added uh, Kodi itself to the list, and it runs fairly well. You do have to make some changes, but I've explained all that in a separate video. Um Obviously, you can download games. Uh, here's a bunch that they're kind of pointing out right now. Um, and you can stream games from the NVIDIA grid. Uh, here are a bunch of them. I haven't really played around with this too much. It seems to work, you know, just fine. As long as you have a pretty good internet connection, it seems to do the job. Um, so with that said, oh, one other thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, the click to search feature, I'm not going to show it off right now, but it is really cool. Uh, anything that you search in there will go automatically mostly to YouTube and search through all of YouTube's properties. Uh, my understanding is it's actually possible to register all of Cody's content inside of the NVIDIA Shield, excuse me, inside of the Android TV interface. Um, so that may be something we look into in the future, just so we also have that ability to, to automatically do a voice search for any of your Cody content. Really cool stuff, though. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and open Cody and see what that looks like. So as you can see, Cody is Cody. I mean, that's all it is. It's really simple to use. It's, it's what you're used to. There's no real changes made for uh, the NVIDIA Shield. The only big difference is, the big changes you might notice uh, over time are skip stepping, which we have a video up for. You can check that out in the comments. Um, and uh, the the upgrade from the current system, uh, from the old system, which was set at 1080p and couldn't handle very much in terms of really high quality stuff, to now 4K. So if you have a screen that can run 4K, uh, Cody can now run on that screen, and we'll show that off here in a minute. Um, so that's Cody. That's Cody running on the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, the thing is, you probably don't want to just see the regular Cody app running the way you've seen it all along, so we're going to have to see Cody running on a 4K TV, I think. Which brings us to Hefner TV. Hefner, right? Correct. So I'm over here with uh, Greg Hefner. Um, a, he's a local businessman here in Wichita who sells TVs of really any kind of shape and size, including this nice little 4K guy right here. Um, the idea right now is we're going to show off the ability of the Shield to do all kinds of things in 4K rather than just your regular 1080p. So uh, thanks for letting us, uh, sure. letting us do the shoot here, Greg. So the major difference between uh, running the NVIDIA Shield console, or Android TV as they call it, um, on a 4K TV and a regular TV is almost indistinguishable. Like, there's very little way to tell the difference if you're just looking. Um, the, the best way I've noticed is actually just to take your TV remote and hit the info button and make sure up in the top left corner you can see um, it actually says 2160p, which is the, uh, the equivalent of 4K. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and get into Kodi and see what it looks like. Uh, as you can see, it looks pretty great. The one thing about Kodi is the UI itself is actually already scaled up. It starts out as a standard 720p UI. Um, you can't really tell here because the difference between upscaled 720p and 4K is not that big. Um, nevertheless, it's still pretty distinctly clear and sharper looking. Um, 
So I brought along a number of videos that we can check out just to see how good it looks um, in actual 4K. So let's go ahead and open those up. Okay, so primarily I brought along a bunch of trailers. For example, here's the uh, 4K Star Wars trailer. But I think nothing really shows off how cool 4K actually looks other than the, uh, in my opinion, one of, the, one of the better videos out there, which is of course, good old Big Buck Bunny made by Blender. And I think that really does it. That shows off just how sharp and clear everything looks at this higher refresh rate. Um, now, it should be understood, this is the kind of thing where you really do want a ridiculously giant screen to see the difference. Or you need to sit exceptionally close. For example, I'm only three or four feet away from the TV right now. Uh, maybe four or five feet away from the TV right now. Um, and it looks amazing, but if I got very much further away, um, it would start to look more and more like just a regular 1080 screen. Um, so when you're looking into this, definitely keep that idea in mind. 4K is absolutely an awesome way to go, but you're going to need some real equipment to make it work. Now the other really cool thing about this shield running on this 1080 screen, and this will be true no matter what you have it hooked up to. You can have it hooked up to an AVR, that's a, a, an audio video receiver, you can have it hooked up to whatever. Um, if you don't want anyone else to hear what you're listening to, uh, or if it's a loud room and you want to be able to hear it whenever other people are talking, all you have to do is take the remote control that comes with the, or the, the you buy separately, and there's a little space down here for a headphone jack. That's also true uh, with the controller that comes with it. There's a headphone jack right there. The really interesting thing about this is these run on different protocols, um, which is a thing I ran into, a real issue I ran into as we were developing or, or modifying the software to run on this platform. Um, the audio over Wi-Fi worked fine, but as we're attempting to make use of HD audio, uh, the audio over the remote control didn't work, and in fact caused the entire Kodi system to crash. Um, the reason for this is because of a hack that we're having to do to try to get HD audio working, uh, and it's unfortunate. Hopefully that will get fixed in a way where HD audio works and this works, uh, but we'll have to see. Um, for those who are interested, the audio works over this uh, using Wi-Fi Direct, and it works using this over Bluetooth, uh, using the AD2P protocol. Alright, so that is the NVIDIA Shield Android TV, or as I like to call it, the NVIDIA Shield console, or the mini Xbox. Um, so uh, thanks for watching, and uh, now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to watch some TV. Hopefully Greg will be okay with me hanging out here for a while.